Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Word Balloon, the comic book conversation show. John Suntress here. Great conversation today with Matt Fraction about uh, Sex Criminals. Volume 4 of uh, the ongoing series with he and Chip Zdarsky is out now. And uh, we talk about that. Matt's been doing a lot of television work lately. And uh, we talk about uh, his observations on uh, working for Universal, uh, doing some uh, story development ideas for them. And also, uh, he's you know done a few uh, scripts. He did a episode of uh, Da Vinci's Demons a while back. And it's been a while since we've talked to Matt. So it's great to catch up on uh, what he's thinking. And, uh, you know, not only about uh, his own books, but also uh, we get a little insight into uh, maybe his uh, current opinion of uh, Marvel and DC or the opportunity to work for them again. You might have remembered that uh, the Inhumans uh, world was going to have a Matt Fraction book, an Inhuman book, and suddenly it got canceled. And uh, Matt doesn't come right out and say uh, why, but I think he makes his uh, opinion clear in terms of how he feels about working for one of the big two at this point in his career. Uh, it's interesting timing today that I'm releasing this episode of uh, Matt talking about sex criminals. You might have heard Hugh Hefner died, the uh, Playboy mogul. Um, look, I'm aware of where society's morals are today and also uh, the very fair point that uh, in Hef's personal life, kind of icky and an icky uh, opinion uh, towards uh, women, again, in his personal life, a couple divorces and sleeping around and the whole thing with the weird girlfriends and, uh, you know, whatever. I mean, but but all that said, you cannot deny that uh, Playboy represented a major cultural shift in our society starting in the 50s and continuing, I would say, as far as influence through the early 2000s when... Um, the internet kind of usurped uh, the porn uh, place on the magazine stand. And uh, again, if you were a Playboy reader, you knew it was more than just uh, pictures of naked women. There were um, incredible articles in there. I know it's cliche to say it, but it's true. And there was some real literary weight in Playboy. Uh, both, uh, you know, for the fun stuff like uh, serializing Ian Fleming and the James Bond books to uh, giving Alex Haley an early platform. Uh, the Playboy interview was always uh, filled with really smart things. I am fascinated by the Playboy culture. I won't deny it. It was uh, taboo reading when I was a little kid and uh, hit me at the right time that, you know, when I was old enough, I did, I did read the magazine. I'm always fascinated by where pop culture starts. And uh, I think Hefner's business story is an amazing story. It is laid out in the Amazon Prime series called American Playboy, which is part documentary and part drama. Uh, I've talked about it because I've had Patty Farmer on, a Playboy historian that is in the midst of a three-volume series of oral history conversations with people that made Playboy what it was. Playboy Swings was our first conversation in her first book about the clubs and his incredible influence on jazz. Playboy Laughs is the current book, and it talks about the clubs and the comedians that played there, ground-breaking things, black comedians finally allowed in white clubs, and integrating clubs. Hef was very responsible for that, making Dick Gregory's career, opening the door early for Bill Cosby, Richard Pryor, and others. Um, and then uh, the other half of Playboy Laughs is uh, very much, of, I think, of interest to the Word Balloon listening audience because it's all about the cartoons in, hey, in Playboy and uh, him really extending a hand and a paycheck to some amazing Golden Age comic book creators, Jack Cole, Harvey Kurtzman, Will Elder, to ma name a few easily. And uh, the book is just filled with a lot of anecdotes about these cartoonists that, that made their mark in Playboy magazine. Uh, so, yeah, I can't deny it. I mean, again, he really created a, a social culture out of nothing. And it was a magazine that stood above Cavalier and some of the other magazines, Stag and, and things like that, that had come out in the 50s. Uh, and certainly uh, even Penthouse, uh, his his great uh, rivalry with Bob Guccione back in the, in the 70s and 80s. Um, again, I find it interesting. I can't deny it. So, uh, Flawed Man... But uh, a pretty interesting uh, media empire created from nothing. And from that, I, I always find it fascinating. You know, Walt Disney, not the greatest guy in the world either. And we're, I'm still fascinated by the Disney story as well. So uh, interesting timing. And I think, honestly, 
you can find a through line between Playboy magazine and sex criminals, to be honest. So it's uh, great to have Matt on. Uh, we talk about uh, a lot of beasts and have a lot of fun. It's uh, been a long time since I've had a fireside conversation with Matt Fraction, and I'm really happy to welcome him back on today's Word Balloon. It's all brought to you by the League of Word Balloon listeners. Thank you, League, for your friendship and your support uh, through uh, Patreon. Uh, don't forget, uh, Word Balloon is free. It'll always be free. But if you want to help out the cause and think Word Balloon is uh, helping uh, and, and you're, you appreciate what uh, I'm trying to do with these conversations and think, you know, it's it's worth uh, supporting in a financial way, you can go to wordballoon.com and uh, click on the Patreon ad there. Or you can go to patreon.com slash wordballoon. And uh, thank you uh, very much. Is Word Balloon worth the price of a comic book each month? Um, I think uh, a lot of my uh, output that I've been uh, giving you lately might uh, justify that. But uh, if you can afford it and you think it's worth it, that's great. Thank you very much to the League of Word Balloon listeners. Your legion grows every day. Word Balloon is also brought to you by InStock Trades at InStockTrades.com. There's some really fun books that are available now on InStockTrades.com. Things like the Mighty Thor Omnibus Hardcover Volume 3. This is uh, the Kirby variant uh, cover, but let's see. Is it uh, it's Stanley, Jack Kirby, John Buscema? This is from uh, Thor 153 through 194. And as you know, it uh, took over the, was it Tales to Astonish or Journey into Mystery? It was Journey into Mystery, right? That, that numbering. So, But this is classic vintage Thor. Um, Silver Surfer is in there. The Wrecker is in there. Loki, of course. And it's just gorgeous. And there's an incredible Galactus is in there. There's a there's a wonderful uh, Jack Kirby cover to this. So uh, check it out. It's 50% off. $62.50. There's also the Absolute Justice League Origin hardcover. This is from Jeff Johns and Jim Lee. This is the new 52. And that origin story... Um, it's the first, uh, is it the first five or first six issues of uh, Justice League? It's 350 pages, so it's more than that, I guess. Wow. Maybe it's the first 12 or something like that. I can't f- remember how long Jim was on the run, and it doesn't give details on how many uh, how many pages or how many issues are collected, and maybe there's a lot of back matter here. But it's uh, 50% off. It's $49.99. You can also get Royal City Trade Paperback Volume 1 from Jeff Lemire, both writing and art, man, this is another one of those uh, deep-thinking Jeff Lemire books that I just adored, and I, I can't recommend it enough. This first trade, it's 160 pages, 50% off. It's just $4.99, and so worth it. Such a wonderful story. Can't, can't suggest it enough. How about the Thor epic collection from Marvel, The Wrath of Odin? This collects Thor 131 to 153 and the second annual. So let's see. What else have they got here? You've got uh, Replica, the Super Scroll, uh, Lady Sif, the Return of Ra- Lady Sif in here. You've got Ego, the Living Planet. Um, the cover is a beautiful Kirby cover that depicts um, Thor going after. Oh, is it a Don? I forget what the hell they're called. I forget. You'll know what it is. Never mind. <laughs> the record is in there. How about that? 512 pages in this book. And it's. Uh, 50% off. It's just $19.99 from InStockTrades.com. I'm not even going to try any more books because clearly I, my my head is... Oh, I should... Hey, here we go. Of course, Matt Fraction's own book, Volume 4 of Sex Criminals, one of the main reasons why we're talking today. Him and Chip Sidarsky. This is for, Forgery, or Forgy, excuse me, Forgy. And uh, this book is uh, 42% off. It's $9.85. So there's another great book you can get from InStockTrades.com. Don't take my word for it. Check out the site. Great books, great prices. If your orders are $50 or more, you'll receive free shipping from our friends at InStockTrades.com. Without further ado, let me present to you this new fireside chat with Matt Fraction, now on Word Balloon. He's back. Man, it's been a long time since we've had a fireside chat, almost as long as the FDR administration has been out of office. But uh, Matt Fraction, welcome back to Word Balloon. Hello, thank you for having me. It's an honor. Am I thrilled? <laughs> yes. That's almost Orson Wellian. That was very good. I like that. Uh, yeah. How you doing? All right, bud. No, doing all right. Doing uh, and biting my nails about the Cubs. We should get our baseball talk out of the way right up top. Oh yeah, yeah, no, totally. But it's, it's uh, a good weekend uh, with St. Louis. Ha ha! So good. <laughs> um, um, 
Yeah, it's cool how uh, how uh, 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 our magic number <laughs> dropped and theirs increased. Indeed. <laughs> cool. Those bre- those pesky brewers, though. Yeah, man. Brew crew. Never count them out. It's, it, you know, honestly, though, after last year, this is fine. And and maybe I'm that kind of yeah, conditioned, no, no. beaten dog of a Cub fan where I'm like, this is lovely. Whatever happens is great. And Listen, my... my, my line has always been like a single game in October is great. Yep. Uh, 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 You know, two years back, had we had lost to the pirates by all means, we should have, it still would have been a great, we got one more game than the Cardinals and that's all that matters. Just, just do we have one more game? Just give me one. Let's push it as long as possible. Give me just as much of a season as I can get. That's all I ever want. Uh, uh, and then we have a race. And like We're sort of like the only competitive division in baseball. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty great. Well, and interesting to watch the Dodgers stumble. I mean, obviously have, having such an, a nice conference oh that God. they can, but isn't that interesting? And what will that mean in the postseason? And, yeah. you know, so, yeah, anything's kind of possible if you can get past that first series. Who knows? Oh, God, I had a dream that – I saw Vin Scully, and I go, Vin, if the Dodgers make it, are you coming back? And he goes, we'll see. <laughs> it was great on MLB Network watching Dodger games because they're on whatever Fakakta cable network uh, deal. And I know that it pisses off like the majority of, of you know Los Angelinos that they can't watch it on whatever you know special cable network they're on. But they throw him on MLB, so it was such a pleasure in that last season hearing him call games. And you know, he's he's the man. He he went he went out uh, on top. Uh, Good he man. Was, uh, he was he uh, man. I would listen to him. I, I'm not even a Dodgers fan. I listened to him. I was a Vince Scully. Fan. I'm the same way, man. No, I, exactly. Have you read? Have, I'm I'm reasonably certain we've talked about this before, but it's been years. There was a great baseball omnibus collection of articles and essays over the years and they had the last inning or half inning of a uh, sandy koufax perfect game called by scully and they just transcribed what he wrote and it uh, what he said and it read beautifully oh that's fantastic i i, I don't uh-uh. i wonder if that's the roger angel book and no it was literally called like the baseball omnibus i bet it's like one of those ones you'll find in the used book section of amazon or whatever mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. yeah no worth worth hunting uh, but yeah, it was it was just fantastic, and yeah, he was great. I never got a chance to talk to him when in my sports radio years. Did talk to Ernie Harwell, the great Tiger Ooh. announcer, and yeah, yeah, he was and Harry Callis, and we used to make uh, we used to make uh, Harry Callis say Mickey Morandini, <laughs> and that was fun for us. But anyway, all right, uh, it was a thing. It was a thing uh, who, the Yankee guy, um, Mel Allen. Yeah, that uh, Jeter kept using his recording How about after. That? Derek, 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 Jita, Jita. Oh, the P. Yeah, the, that's right. The the uh, PA announcer. But, but then when when so he was gone, he was gone, and then like, he passed away. Right? And then like uh, oh, yeah. uh, Jeter still used his <laughs> call. And then like when Jeter retired, everyone was like, "Oh, by the way, this is the last time we're going to hear Mel Allen." Oh man, it is in Mel Allen. Just because so I know I, Yankee fans right now are yelling at the podcast, going, "No, it's not yell- Mel Allen, dumbass." No, Mel was the play by play guy. They used to do this week in baseball. Oh, okay. Who? Well, who's the? I, I'll look him up. But yeah, as we're talking, I'll certainly <laughs> I'll look up. Eric Jeter. Again, not a Yankees fan, but I like that guy. Oh uh, yeah. Oh no. He's well, again. It's guys like that, man. They they're they're what makes baseball baseball. I gotta be honest, man. I I and again, this is my old man gene kicking in, but not a fan of a lot of the current crop of uh, of people. I mean, and and honestly, I I really I mean, and now I'm even blanking on his name. Who was the Fox? Uh, the big Fox voice that was doing the World Series last year with the Cubs and uh, the Indians, and he did the uh, Cubs and Dodgers. Oh, that was uh, that was Seth MacFarlane of TV's The Family Guy, <laughs> and of the Orville. Currently. He's a big, big, Joe big Buck. Fox I superstar. Could, I couldn't think of Joe Buck's name. Joe Buck, yeah, yeah. I mean, I just you know, don't like to, I just don't like to say it out loud. Well, I mean, it's like Bill Juice. You say it three times, he shows up and lectures you on things. Well, I'm like a pendulum with that guy because there are times that, like when uh, Artie Lang went nuts on his HBO show. Mm-hmm. He was very cl- – Joe Buck was very classy about it. Like, hey, man, you know, Artie's, Artie's a dirty comic. What did you expect? I didn't take any offense, whatever. And, I mean, because it was quite the topic, obviously, that week on sports radio. And uh, and so I thought that was cool. But then, yeah, man, I don't know. During that 
Cub Dodgers series. I'm like, shut up, man. <laughs> he, he, uh, um, uh, his old man was this was the Cardinals guy, right? Joe Buck. Yes, that's right. How are right? You? And we'll we'll see you tomorrow night, right? The yes. legendary. Um, yeah, I mean, just felt like, uh, um, um, hey, you know who grew up uh, hating the Chicago Cubs is Joe Buck, my son. Give him a job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's all, and it, and it just radiated in waves. Um, um, it, it was, it was, it got to a point where, like, I would do the, I would have to listen to the game as it was being called on the radio uh, uh, and watch it just because I like, hated the. Yes. The, the the Fox I, crew. I agree. Bob Shepard, by the way, the P, uh, the PA announcer, the classic man, and he passed away in uh, 2010, July 11th. Dalek Jita Jita. <laughs> That's good. In fact, for a while, my my fantasy baseball team once upon a time was Dalek Jeter in tribute <laughs> to the great that Debbie Allen, happen. the that... voice of the voice of the Yankees, Debbie Allen. <laughs> Exterminate, exterminate. <laughs> 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 that would be fantastic oh man all right we got our baseball fix in so so sex criminals man 20 20 issues in big uh yeah, is that the craziest fucking thing you ever heard yeah i was just talking about it with chipper so that you know yeah i, I and i honestly i forgive me but i knew if if i had the comedy team together we'd get nowhere and I, yeah, no. and there's plenty to talk about with both of you so thank you for doing the end well we've actually never met so this is <laughs> Probably for the best. Right. Uh, 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 I would hate to break our streak. I feel like if we ever get to know each other, just the, you know, the chemistry will change. <laughs> so, and and um, he told me that you're you guys, as far as the big story goes, you're about two thirds of the way through. Yeah, I, I think I think any I think if you're reading the book, I think if you're you're you're, you're caught up with us, I think it's pretty clear. Um, this is this is the second act break, you know. Mm-hmm. This is uh, this is uh, as dark as it's going to get, you know. Our our our, uh, our, our leads uh, break up. Yeah, so that's uh, sort of uh, the worst case scenario for a a, 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 sex, a sex comic or a love comic, for that matter. Um, so you know, yeah, no, we gotta we gotta now we gotta see what happens, you know. Yeah, how we how we get them back together, where they go from here. Wow, that's cool. Well, you know, and I've been I, this has been the standard question for creator own books you know how long do you go you want to tell a long story and i and we all appreciate that but there are times uh and i think further along than say 30 issues where sometimes you look up and go okay we're on issue 48 um and we're in the middle of another arc like uh, you know hey i like the book but really like how how, how long are we going to go because there is so much competition on the shelf mm-hmm. and and a lot of great books are coming out and, you know, I mean, as I forget who's saying, how do you keep it? James Ingram, I believe. How do you keep the music playing? You know. Yeah, I think there's um, a sweet spot for everything, depending on what the, what the, what the car is, you know? What's the vehicle? How, how, how much, how many years and how many miles can you get out of this thing um, um, before it, it starts to try everyone's patience? And I think a lot of that is kind of dependent on premise. A lot of it's kind of dependent on the world. Um, and we're really telling the story of John and Susie. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's, it's after a while, it's, it's going to, you know, it, it was never really about the bank. Right. Sure. So, so, so yeah. Okay. <laughs> I also, uh, again, I, not I, that we're done with the bank, but like the, 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 there's a terminus point to that. You know, I, I mean, there's, 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 there's a point where. We're ha- yes, it's all it's all bubbling. It's all building to a head. Very cool. I uh, I and I t- t- said this to Chip as well. And I want to get your point of view. You know, honestly, the community is amazing. That is behind this book, and at times as funny as the two of you. Oh, easily. And, yeah, easily. And I and, and seriously, I get that trades. You know, you want to you want to keep the issues. You have a reason to buy the the single issues. And and truly, a lot of times it's it's definitely part of the show. As much as uh, Bendis's old powers, you know, letter column has always been and stuff, and sure, some sure. of these others and everything. And it's a shame that you know the trade doesn't have room for him, or that you know there's a way to you know after after market or after you know after shelf life that you guys can bring them back because I do think they're really really funny. No, oh, thank you. I mean, I think it's part of what makes the issues. Uh, uh... Special, 
you know, it's part of what makes the, the issues unique and, um, and it's, it's, it's part of what, you know, I, I feel like it's, it's sort of what we, that we, you know, it's, it's a way that we could support our, our retail partners in the direct market, you know? Um, um, yeah, there's going to be a book and the other, it's going to be collected and yeah, you'll be able to get it, you know, on your phone if you want, but there's this amazing thing that happens and the only place you can find it is in these, in these issues. Um, and I think it's worth it. You know, I think it's, it's absolutely worth it. It's, 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 uh, 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 you know, Kelly Sue often describes the end of, um, Bitch Planet is being like, oh yeah, on top of writing the comic, then we edit a magazine. Yes. Um, there's there's some thing that feels like that for sure, and it's it's amazing and remarkable, and and I hope it compels people to pick the issues up from a from a comic book store. And I, if I remember correctly, were because it was at the same time that you and Warren Ellis were doing those slim image books. Are you the man who coined coined the phrase back matter, or was it Warren who like who? who oh, I think it was Warren. Really? Okay. Uh, okay. I got it from Warren. It, was, it certainly wasn't me. Okay, because I know, like I said, it was around that same time that he was doing Fel. And now I'm blanking. What was your What was your slim book? Was it, it was Casanova? Casanova? Yeah, it was the guy, Casanova. There you go. Jesus. All right, we're gonna get to Casanova. That's awesome, man. Jesus. Um, but yeah, no. I honestly, I'm really glad this is happening. And, and certainly, Brubaker and, and Phillips with Criminal. You know, you I haven't read that. Is it any good? <laughs> I'm not sure who that is. I, hey, man, don't kid yourself. I can't. I can't even get him to, re- to respond to an email. I miss him. So tell uh, him, tell him, hey, and give him a hug for me. And I, I was hoping to see him at San Diego, and I could. I, I, I mistimed uh, the the chance to do that. So, and I'm sure. <laughs> hey, man, honestly, I'm thrilled. He's kicking ass. I'm very happy for him. You know. So I'm, I'm sure down the line he'll come back. It's like Lassie. I'm like I'm like Roddy McDowell. <laughs> he'll eventually come back. <laughs> As I cry on Nig- Nigel Bruce's shoulder. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Hey, man, it was on every Sunday uh, when I was growing yeah, up. Yeah, no, no. Family I, Classics it, with Fraser Thomas. But no, it's, uh, well, that's good. Uh, and, and yes, it's a, it's a huge reason to uh, not wait for the trades. And obviously, you know, I mean, again, both of you guys having such wonderful success and everything. I mean, yeah, there was some delays, obviously, through this arc. And, uh, you know, so sometimes it is hard to wait for an issue. Uh, although we were uh, there, the, the last issue I think was six weeks. But other than that, we we shipped on time. It was a wait to actually. We didn't publish until we could be every four weeks. I see. Um, so it, it was like we never stopped working on it, but we didn't ship until we had like like literally three in the can and four was halfway done. Um, so for what it's worth, which I mention only because. You know, we fucking busted our asses to do no, it. No, and I am. But no, but I will never be dark that long again. It was stupid. It was a dumb idea. And we let ourselves think that it was a good idea. And it was. <laughs> <laughs> has, it, has it impacted. Uh... I mean, our sales, you know, obviously sales are still good and everything, and it's, you know... Yeah, good. yeah, I mean, that's kind of the amazing thing, you know? Um, um, there's natural attrition, but it's still, you know, terrific. Good deal. Um, um, hey, man, we had to wait for Planetary. We had to wait for other books in the day. So, I mean, it... it yeah, know, I mean, uh, it's it's one of those things where we, we wanted to try and please everyone, and it, there's just no way to do it. What, what's important to us in the long run is to make the best book possible because it's going to be collected and the collections will sell forever in theory. Um, um, and you're not going to get a book that would sell forever in theory or in practice. If you're cranking it out, um, you know, there's, there's a reason why it's not a Marvel book, you know, it's, 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 uh, uh, anyway. Well, is it, Um, no, but that's, and I was going in that direction, anyway, not in the Marvel direction, but asking, given 20, 20 issues in, is it easier to write them together now, or is it harder? I mean, I, Chip was explaining to me uh, that you obvi- it's almost sounds like Marvel style, where you kind of talk about plot. You, you know, he puts something together. He said he, he waits, uh, you know, and shows it to you at the last possible minute when everything is kind of done. And then you do kind of a dialogue tweak if you need it. No, no, I mean, I still write a full... Um 
a full script. Okay. Uh, uh, and you know, it's 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 a, a super detailed, you know. Okay. But no, we 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 sort of, you know, chip. I try to wait as long as possible because I want to absorb it all and laugh, and then I kind of will rewrite around what. Um, the kind of amazing stuff that Chip has created, and you know, we sort of but yeah, so there is back and forth uh, to an extent, mm-hmm. but it's but it's it's always um, um, with the intent of, of building on what the other's done. But no, it's 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 a it remains a um, brutal pain in the ass to write every single month. Hmm. Okay, and then and, and knowing where it's going doesn't make it easier. Not really. Okay, because obviously those are the broad strokes, I guess. Yeah, and and you know I can I'll know. Um, what's it's like I can tell when I've used this metaphor before. I apologize, but it's like you have a bunch of uh, ingredients sitting on your kitchen counter, and I look at it and I can tell I have the right stuff to make a cake. You know, mm-hmm. you got eggs, yeah. you got milk, butter, sugar, flour, some other stuff. I don't know, vanilla. And like, all right, I can turn this into a cake. I don't know what this is. This is this is cake stuff. Uh, um, and then there's times where I know there's something missing. I don't know what it is, but I know I don't have enough stuff for a cake. I have, <laughs> you know, I need eggs or whatever. I might not know that it's eggs, and I got to figure it out. Like, what am I? What am I missing? What isn't here? <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Um... As always, the answer is eggs. <laughs> So when is twenty one? Now that the the uh, the trade is out, not to rush you. <laughs> January, I think, or January or February. I think okay. it's January. Okay, I believe that's what Chip said as well. Yeah. All right. Very good. Uh, he, he finished the black and white today. So uh, um, cool. That's awesome. No, and honestly, I'm I'm really happy for him too. That uh, this is you know resulted in a lot more interest in his writing, and you know he's you know. He gets to play in the sandbox now and play with the toys. So that's yeah, cool. the, the whole world is falling in love with my chum. It's yeah, great. man. Absolutely. That's hilarious. Did you guys, you guys did the, oh, you know, he told me about the Rose City panel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what did we do? I don't remember. He said, that's hilarious because it was only like a week or so ago. And I believe me, I understand. And it is that kind of life. I get it. It was, it's, well, here's the thing is it, uh, there was a, a span of uh, uh, 14 days where I was at a convention for eight of them. And then six days later had a, uh, a Viking themed birthday party for a group of 10 year olds. Um, <laughs> I don't remember my middle name right now. I understand, buddy. It's all so, right. I, uh, what the fuck did we do with the fuck that we do at Rose city. I guess he was late and you had like the room completely like silent. Or whatever. What oh, he, he wasn't, he wasn't even late. That was the funny part. He was just, he was going to the bathroom and, and I was there. So I was early and, uh, uh, and I just asked everyone to please be completely silent. And we just sort of sat there <laughs> in stony silence until he arrived. It was really funny. Was everyone scowling as he, as he walked in? I think it was it was uh, 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 the funny thing is that he kind of like just walked in and sat down in the audience. <laughs> Maybe assuming another panel was going on. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it was just like, oh, what is this one about? You know, <laughs> that's excellent. Son, man. son of a bitch. Too goddamn funny. Well, that's cool, and that's why you know another reason why, like I said, I didn't want to have you guys at the same time was I'm like, all right, we did that for Cincinnati, and, and people got that, so that was cool, and it was good. <laughs> And then everyone's live, live and funny and happy. So that was that was a fun pod. So, yeah, man, excellent. Hopefully, this one will also be fun. But uh, well, let's, let's just talk about baseball more. People love I, that. I, you know, can we can we go through the Rocky Calavito story, please? Wow, wow, Rocky <laughs> Calavito, deep, deep cuts, deep Dude, Calavito. Exactly. I, as a as a musicologist, I understand exactly. I figured you'd appreciate that. I swear, you know, I spent sixteen years doing sports in broadcasting. Yeah. The only thing I would be interested in doing again would be like Rocky. Well, Rocky <laughs> Calavito, exactly. Literally, Rocky Calavito. No, historic. You know, sports history. Right. Because that. Because right. honestly, I'm I'm thrilled for the Cubs. I you know the Bears. What are you going to do? Uh, <laughs> oh well. Uh, but yeah, I I don't know, man. I I don't. After 16 years of it, like having to you know do it every day, and I, I know people are like, "Fuck you." We work for a living. 
please, you should thank your stars. And I do. It was a fun time. But yeah, I'm like, yeah, that's enough. Because it yeah. does. It gets to be like the same. Because, you know, seasons are the same. It's different guys, but it's the same problems. Yeah, and, and after a while, you're clearly not talking about anything. Yes. <laughs> you're just like, oh, we got to fill hours, guys. All right, well, here a comedian said something on a on a show, and that true. is an issue we're going to talk about. July, July, in, as far as, uh, in the you know, that time of the year, July is always the tough month. And then if you're not in a hot college basketball town February so those are like the two and even in Chicago and being surrounded by a bunch of schools even that is just too niche in terms of well alright I've made the Northwestern fans happy for this last right. 20 minutes right. you know right. not doing much for Illini right now while we're talking about Northwestern but you know but anyway so yeah so that's my that's my sports thing this is becoming more about me than you I don't understand and that's alright you get it out just, <laughs> just work through you're like Bob Newhart can you help me out um mm -hmm. I cry at night. Famed, famed Chicago <laughs> psychiatrist Bob Newhart. Uh, they just had the. You uh, see the picture of of Bob with his uh, W flag? Yes, that was the best. That made me very happy. Oh, he's seriously. He came on our high school radio station when we were doing like a twenty, like a forty eight hour marathon, and he called in, and he said, oh, "I think that's great. You kids, you kids, keep doing what you're doing." This is like in the early eighties or whatever. We're like, man, that's awesome. Bob Newhart called in. So no, he's a he's a good Chicagoan, absolutely. I love that he was on Conan and they were breaking down the opening of the show mm -hmm. when he's walking around and taking the L and everything, and it makes right, no, right. you know it makes no sense geographically, right and, right? and it's very funny, and he really did break it down because of course he is from Chicago, so and Conan lived in Chicago, so he he knew what he was talking about too. And it was very very funny. So and I don't know if you know this a little trivia. I put it out there on my Facebook feed and Twitter. My stepmother. I don't know what either those things are. <laughs> my my stepmother is in the opening of the Bob Newhart credits. Wow. She is right behind Bob. Bob is holding his hat. It's when, when he comes out of the building and it says the Bob oh, Newhart. Oh, is she hat. the crazy lady with the hammer? <laughs> she is, but not in that scene. Uh, wow. Yeah, you can literally see her on the left of the screen and she like comes through the door and they the producers called and said, you know, or mailed, you know, wrote her a letter and said, "Okay, you're in the shot." We will pay you, you know, a few hundred bucks or whatever it was. But, you know, either the choice is we blur you out or we'll give you some money. But you're not getting royalties, obviously. But you're going to be on every week. And she's like, I'll take the money. Sweet. So now she's part of TV history. She's like that old lady that's looking at Mary Tyler Moore when she throws Yeah, the Oh, I read an article about her once. <laughs> I'd be happy to write a scathing article about my yeah, stepmother. Like my, my, my nana gave Mary Tyler Moore the stink eye. <laughs> See, I should do that. That, that. that might make me some money, actually. So I'll have to keep that in the back, back pocket. There you go. Dibs. All right, let's move, let's move, on, to, let's move on to Odyssey. So oh. how's that going, man? Oh, we're sort of – I mean, it's, uh, uh, Christian is doing um, uh, 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 Black Bolt at Marvel right now. Yes. Um, uh, so Odyssey is kind of on hold, uh, uh, Yeah, I think – there's a thing we want to do that's a little more self-contained. I think that we might try and do before we get back to volume two of Odyssey. Okay. Um, um, basically if, uh, if, uh, Christian and I, you know, tried to do a Miyazaki story. Interesting. <laughs> Yeah, uh, um, um, which you know, if uh, an Odyssey was supposed to do, you know, Wonder Woman and Barbarella for kids, so who, who knows what the fuck it's going to look like or what it's going to end up being? But oh, we got an idea. We're 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 we're, we're sort of, I think, heading towards, and it might be nice to do something a little shorter and a little less. Um, uh, hard. <laughs> I understand. Sure. So we'll see. That's cool. How has the reaction been to Odyssey? Um, it's been intense. Uh, uh, from like like, it's like I feel like um, not everybody reads the book, but I've met everyone that does. Okay, and they've written a paper about it. Interesting. Um, um, and it's a really big. Uh, there's a large academic. Like like it's taught a couple places. It's 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 a whole. It's 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 amazing. It's a book that um, 
really smart people respond to, which m makes me super uncomfortable because they'll recognize me for the uh, uh, imposter piece of shit I am. I understand. No, but that's fantastic. I had no idea that it reached that level, although it makes sense given its source material. And it is always interesting when you take the classics. I don't know if this counts as the classics. This is my stupidity. But, you know, obviously the Odyssey and... and uh, Odyssey's Arabian totally Nights classics. and you know, I mean, these are these are the classics. Uh, the or Orestes, what I always forget what the, and I'm Greek. Yeah, Orestia, of course. Yeah, Orestia. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how you say. Yeah. That's the other thing too. Is I uh, uh, when you're hey when you're uh, when you're uh, autodidact, uh, you know a lot of words, but you don't know how to say any of them. <laughs> no, that's well, you know, seriously, this, um, I I know your psychedelic bent, so that's that's awesome. Yeah. That you me, me, me and we're doing, you know, Miyazaki for kids. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's pretty cool, man. Well, and also um, gender bending and gender switching and stuff. And, and I mean, honestly, I was talking about this with Chip, not to generalize and put everything in one basket, but um, him him making Jug, Jughead asexual. I'm always interested in like what the what the reactions are from even from a from yeah a sexuality standpoint, I guess. Right. Um. It, 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 it's uh, look, it's 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 humbling and flattering. You know, it's 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 amazing enough to think that someone's going to read the stuff you write, but when somebody you know identifies with it, I, I saw someone talking to me and Chip at Rose City, and I said to him that, that it wasn't until Jughead that. They knew the word asexual, and when they read the word, they knew what they were. Wow, you know, yeah. and like that's a uh, that's a uh, that's pretty profound, man. Sure, no question. Well, and again, it's it's this is this is really an interesting time, and I'm glad that especially creator owned books. I, I I really think creator owned books can do it easier than the mainstream, and maybe again, maybe this is just an old reflex and and conditioning as a white male and then being surrounded by that stuff but you know um and not to let them off the hook but i really do think it is it's harder for them because they are it's it, i i use this analogy a lot and i again i said this to chip but i'll see what your reaction is it's like you know it's mcdonald's it's burger king that's what dc and marvel are and and you know it's when and i i think it's good that they allow experimentation when they do but i also know that there's a very, you know, that they want to try and serve everyone again. And that's why I make the McDonald's analogy and the over, you know, 10 billion hamburgers sold. They, you know, that's the business that they're in. And it's important to reflect the world around them and stuff. But I think it does. It is harder for them because there are still people that have hangups. Um, I don't think it's hard. I think it's a matter of corporate willpower and it is not in the best short term interest of shareholders um, to do to change things. Yeah. Because change is unpredictable and chaotic and doesn't yield uh, profit, right? Quarter, right, quarter right away. Quarter and these profits, are, absolutely, man. These, these are people in a um, quarterly profit business, yeah, and and that is uh, the beginning and the end of all things. I hear you, man. Well, and you know, I and now that it's been a few years, is it? You know, I mean, how how are how is it creatively now? Not having to play in the sandbox. Oh, it's great. I do whatever the fuck I want, whenever the fuck I want to do it. It's amazing. <laughs> do you have an editor that you trust uh, beyond, yeah. beyond, you know, beyond spell check and everything that is really like a good story yeah. kind of editor person? Who is it, if you don't mind me asking? Um, well, I, I, I ha uh, Lauren Sankovich. Uh, Sankovich, uh, uh, bless her, absolutely. Don't, don't do so much story stuff, but it's just she's, she's, she's a pair of eyes. But really, I'm, um, I, I rely on my collaborators, you know? Okay. Um, um, and my own kind of instinct, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's, uh, 
listen, the, the cool thing about being a pirate ship is it's a fucking pirate ship. <laughs> no, I hear you, man. But also, yeah, I just, you know, um, like Chip, and again, I think it was more in uh, in terms of his Marvel uh, people. But I asked this of all the, uh, you know, that he was saying that, you know, he's got a good story people that are really right. helping him, obviously, in, from the Marvel standpoint and everything. And I hear what you're saying, because, again, obviously, Chip and, and Christian are, are good storytellers in their own right, obviously. So, uh, but, yeah, I just wonder sometimes yeah, if, uh, you know, a third voice or, you know, somebody outside of the circle, you know, will, will give that spin. Because I do think some creator books suffer from that kind of editorial help. And I'm not seeing any suffering, but I'm just asking if you have somebody like that. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll have... It sort of depends on what the issue is. Um, um, and I don't mean like the issue that I'm writing, but I mean it's sort of like I, I will tend to maybe discuss individual scenes or whatever mm-hmm. if I have a – but no, uh, for, for the most part, it's really a thing that I push myself through and talk to my collaborators about if, 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 if anything. Um, you know, Chip is my ideal reader on sex criminals and, and – my my scripts are all very uh what's it called uh epistological I'm looking that it's up. like letters <laughs> it's like they're very long letters there <laughs> i'm looking that up hold on epistological <laughs> this is great this is great radio <laughs> That's why it's a let's pod- listen, hey let's listen to john look something up this is my pirate podcast exactly I don't even know. Epistological. Epistological. Uh, Neil, Neil Diamond 77 yeah, today. It's, it's epistolary. Yeah. So it's epistolary rather than epistological. Right. But I suppose epistological would be, yes, epistolary. All right. My, 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 scripts are very my scripts are very, like, like letters to somebody. All right. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Bam! People Word. invent new words all the time, but what? which ones actually make it? Here, it's from the Free Dictionary. Where the hell is it? It's an adjective, yes, yes. Having the characteristics of, having the characteristics of an epistle. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. A letter, especially oh, a formal oh, one. You got Free Dictionary. Right. That'd be great. It's just every Free Dictionary. Okay. And, and entry is like <laughs> thing that refers to another exactly. thing. Exactly. It's like, you're not helping me with my SATs, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, all right. Now that's, 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 that's another thing I don't miss about uh, the internet is when uh, kids would write me, basically asking to do their term papers for them. In terms of like uh, their their. Uh, hey, I'm working on a term paper, and what do you think comics are, or whatever? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm supposed to interview uh, th- three people, so uh, tell me uh, what are comics and how did you start to write them? How about the news blog uh, interviewers, the, the comic news blogs that are like, yeah, and they give you the questionnaire. And it's like, hey, honestly, I, I mean, believe me, I say, um, I'm sorry, can we do a phone interview and you can, I don't know, transcribe what I say rather than me yeah, write your article for you? No, because it's the best, listen, the, the best thing about the, uh, the, the, the heartache that was uh, Inhuman was that I stopped doing interviews because I couldn't do interviews about Inhuman because I knew it wasn't happening. And uh, uh, when you stop responding to those emails, uh, those places stop talking to you, and it's great. <laughs> I don't have to say no anymore because I'm not asked. Well, I am glad that you... You'll that, just that. have to bing it yourself. <laughs> I'm glad you've come back so we could have this conversation. You always. Well, truly, you're a good man. I now I'm, I was, I'm it's true. I'm the best. You you're one of the best. I think so. No. Um now gar- well comparing comparing the DC Marvel sandboxes to television. Tell me how that experience has been. And and remind me because I know uh, Da Vinci's Demons didn't you do some- Right. Well, that was just like a, a one episode in the second season. Right. Um um <laughs> Which was crazy. It was me and David Goyer. Awesome. Because David Goyer uh, uh, understands uh, Hollywood is dumb and makes no sense. Um, <laughs> he's like, yeah, we're, you know, because, you know, listen, it's a guild show, so we got to hire a, a freelance writer um, um, for, uh, uh, you know, two episodes a season. Uh, and I know everybody. And Hollywood's always like, oh, you got to have experience uh, but, uh, uh, to write a script, but you can't write a script without experience. But I can read your comics, and I know you can write, and would you like to write 
this show for an episode, and that was that was all praise be unto David Goyer. Hell yeah! Well, I would think huh. I would think the subject would interest you as well, obviously. Oh yeah, no, no, it was it was not a it was not a, a hard job to accept. Like it was a blast. It was a crazy fucking idea. It was a great idea yeah. for a show. Yeah, it was fun. Um. And, and hugely, hugely educational. Um, and and since then, uh, uh, you know, Kel and I, you know, have, have been asked to, to to do a couple things. Yes. Um, she actually had a show go to pilot this past development season that didn't get picked up for air, but like it got shot. Wow. And, like, produced. So she got to do the. She called it TV camp. I understand. Uh, <laughs> Watch, she, got to go watch uh, uh, NBC, how NBC makes a TV show. Well, and she wrote Emerald City, right? A, a, an she episode. wrote an episode of Emerald City, yeah. How yeah. many of those did she do? Two or one? Uh, one okay. was was for sure. Um, yeah, I think it was just the one. But like, like you know, like you sit in a room and you talk about stuff, and your 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 DNA gets in places. You know, like like look, yes. you're gonna have a hot dog. You're gonna be eating a little bit of rat shit. Like there's just it's in there's just fecal <laughs> particulates you can't help. It. So, you know, you sit in a room for a while and your fecal particulates get into the flavor of the show. <laughs> See, and again, the, so, your, your hot dog character from Sex Criminals obviously is still on your mind. Yes, yeah, the, the, the white wiener man. Um, <laughs> you know, the thing that working at the behest of network TV has in common, I found, with, with comics, specifically with Marvel, uh, uh, although I suppose this would be true of DC – is um, they're a client. And I, I found maybe to my detriment, but that the sort of my, my, my time and my experience in advertising kind of kicked in. Sure. Had a, a healthy sense of what was appropriate for me to push on. What was and, and then what was sort of all right, now it's time to please the client, you know? Yes. Um, um, and sort of being able to not divorce myself from caring, but divorce myself from taking it personally. Um, because at the end of the day, you don't own it. Um, and that was sort of the entire model that, that, you know, we, I learned at MK 12 was, you know, fight for the best thing you can, but at the end of the, of the phone call, you got a client, you got to please. Yep. Uh, so, and you know, I think, I think you can tell, <laughs> I like it very tellingly. I think you can see, I think my best stuff at Marvel was the stuff where I was left alone. And the worst stuff I did at Marvel was the stuff where uh, I was, it was trying to please clients, you know? Yes. Yes, indeed. Totally get that. And it's, and yeah, I'm really glad. And, and, you know, you bringing up your, your advertising days and stuff. No, that makes a lot of sense. The stuff that you're, and I, and I'm sure that there's a, you know, whirlwind of NDAs right now, but you are still developing some things for Universal, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. How's that going? Same thing. Is that, is this, you know, I mean, or that was that the previous experience of like Da Vinci and things like that, or are you describing your current situation? Well, you know, it's been both. Um, you know, we we were, we've been brought in on stuff that we didn't create or sort of asked to pitch on. Okay. Um, um, whether it was Kel's pilot or there was a thing we actually wrote to get with this thing we wrote with with Goyer, the three of us, um, based on pre-existing uh a franchise ip okay okay um um because look if kel and i have anything in common it's that the two of us through incredibly different lives and through incredibly different geographic regions even times you know she's 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 older than me mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. we both of us grew up knowing we wanted to service and enhance IP and the attendant brands and vertically integrated media platforms. <laughs> we would sit in the backyard as kids, me and mine, she and hers, she in Germany on a military base, me off of a balcony in the, in uh, Schaumburg, Illinois. I think, God, one day I just want to get out there and service an IP, figure out ways to leverage cross platform vertically interaction and. I want to pivot to video, and it's going to be great. Oh, it's all you're killing me. That's fantastic. Oh god! Yeah. See, and this is as I always say to Kel too. Wouldn't it be nice if we all lived down the street from each other? Because I miss this. That's fantastic, and I get it. Yeah. No, so 
but but that's you know but so like you, you like there was a thing this thing that was the, the project that the three of us were working on and i was going crazy because um not going crazy but there was a note and i i couldn't figure out what the fuck we were being asked okay and that sort of was what um kel kind of was able to glean it was like oh yeah well, like like you have to see the note behind the note right like mm-hmm. this isn't the problem is it's not working and they're trying to tell us why and they don't know why so you know like initially she had this kind of perception of being able to to see they were trying it wasn't like they were trying to be clever or not try to express what they wanted but something innately didn't work in the script and they were trying to articulate that and so we had to kind of not focus on what we were what we were being told but focus on uh, like look at it from like a 35,000 you know feet up kind of perspective mm-hmm. instead of what's wrong with it the scene is fine what are they arguing about in the scene what did they like They're like well what's happening in the scene because that's what's not working for them well this character wants this and this character wants that oh is that really clear are there better ways we could what if we strengthen the dynamics so this character wants this and this character wants that and more importantly they can't have it because of that character and then suddenly you know you kind of find ways to dig into the stuff that, that maybe the note of like hmm, does it have to be a cat make you doesn't necessarily service i'm with you um, but you know but it but there comes a point where it's time to stop caring because it's not yours whereas on the projects of ours that we develop like it is ours and you know if there's a sex criminals show and it sucks it's on me because i made bad choices and I can't say, oh, the network, oh, I was rewritten. No, like, listen, I am the buck stops here on that kind of thing based on the nature of our deal. And it's our stuff, man. It's our stuff. And um, that's totally different. Okay. I get that. Is Would you say that because now um, with streaming and basic cable and pay cable and, and the various platforms that are available now for live action and even animated uh, television – um, are there more, are you finding that they are ambitious in their ideas in terms of, or what they want or what they're willing to hear and are like, yes, let's make that. Um, or, you know, is, is, you know, again, like you said, the pleasing the client thing, um, you know, are, are they receptive? Do you think, I mean, is it, does it seem like a bigger landscape and more opportunities for, for more interesting ideas than, you know, the usual network, uh, stuff? Um, there's a lot of they's in that question. Um, and each they would get a different answer. Yeah. Some, sure. Again, these are, they're a quarterly. Right. Right. There's stuff like everyone, in my experience, the big networks know, you know, it's like the thing like, oh, right. The dinosaur nervous systems were so simple. They'd be dead before. The brain could the signal wouldn't reach the heart to say stop beating. Like it would take a few minutes. Like you're you're dead, but the heart would keep beating. Like it's, there's something like that. It's like oh oh guys, things everything's different. Everything's changing, but it's just it's taking a while for that signal to get to this kind of to this engine of commerce. So there's some things that they are acutely aware that the entire landscape has changed. But by God, this is how we have done it for 80 years. We're gonna do it for 80 more. Yeah regardless of how counterintuitive that is. Um, um, but it's, there's enough commas after the number that nothing else matters. Right. Um, um, it doesn't pay, it, 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 it pays to be risk averse. Yes. Uh, yes. so on some levels, absolutely not. They remain fixed in Amber and it's the same as if fucking Milton Burroughs trying to sell a, <laughs> a was trying to sell a, a, the Cadillacs, right? <laughs> no, do you know why TV starts in the fall? Do you know why no, new TV is Because that's when the new cars used to come out, John. Genius. Of course it is. New cars would come out in September and October. They need commercials on the air to advertise the new cars. Well, let's put the new shows on when it's new car Holy season. Fuck. I mean, that's ridiculous. Being my age and being the nerd that I am, that that never occurred to me. Of course it did. Like, who, who shared that genius also, to you? I love that. Um, that 
that the Red, came from so satellite, that was satellite Sam research, but I don't remember where. Maybe oh, yeah, Jeff Kisseloff's book, The Box, is, is it would be my yes, first guess. Yes, that great book, Gosh. absolutely interesting. Yeah, um, but like it's that's the way it's. Listen, at Marvel, you get paid in half. Uh, half of you, whatever you your page rate is. Let's say you get a hundred dollars a page. You get a script. You get two checks: one for fifty dollars for plot. And one for fifty dollars for script because that's how they used to do things when everything was written Marvel style. When plot was written, the books would be drawn and then you'd write the script. Got it. So I was like, why don't you just write one one check? It's like, well, that's just not how we do it. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> um. Wow. All right. Yeah. Like it's just it's just it's just it's just legacyed in. Like some things are just some fecal particulates, John, are just baked into the smell <laughs> stuff. I think we found our title for this episode. Uh, fecal particulates. Man, people think pin particles are interesting. Wait, wait till you get. No, them. no, fecal particulates. That's the real shit. <laughs> Literally, um, that's excellent. I uh, well, no, and, and yeah, I. I but like, but like the guy, the guy, you know, he's no longer at Universal. Um, but you know, the guy who brought me and Kel in sat down with him, and and you know, he's like, "All right, let's talk about sex criminals." And and I go, "Well, I." I don't know, man, how many cum jokes can we get on the air after Blacklist? And he immediately goes, like, no, 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 God, no, this isn't for broadcast. Jesus, this has got to be premium or streaming. You can't just, oh, come on. And I was like, all right, great. We can have a conversation. Um, Good. You know, because yeah, terrible version of Sex Criminals is on NBC at 9 o'clock. <laughs> that said, it would make me richer than my wildest dreams but it would be terrible. So instead of cashing in, I guess I'm going to keep fighting to make it difficult and good. You know, I have a new perspective after meeting, or I, well, I guess we met on the podcast, but Patrick Schumacher, who was the showrunner for powerless. And mm. yeah, exactly. Mm. Cause I had the same, like, I, you know, I saw it and I'm like, eh, I don't know, man. And he's like, well, yeah, but you know, deal with a network that, you know, kind of, yeah. yeah it's like, well, we didn't want that. And it's like, but you no, bought the no, no, I can, Yeah, but we yeah. don't want that. Right. And it's <laughs> it's because, well, listen, it's one thing to buy a concept, but now you actually got to spend a couple million dollars to get it on the air. And it's like, how do you do that? Well, we're going to shave off every pointed edge, everything that might alienate anyone. We have to make this now appeal to not just the, what, what, the broadest common denominator. Not necessarily lowest, but we have to make a thing that appeals to as many people as possible. Yep. And that is a great way towards tepid. I understand. I, you know, uh, I, it, it happens in ra- you know, it happens in radio. And, and you know, again, I was going to say that, I mean, and we're aware of it because, you know, we're music fans and stuff. You would have th- thought that maybe they would have been watching how the music business has changed. And it was that same thing of, well, no, we've always done it this way since... Edison's gramophone, and we're going to keep doing it. You know, tough. Right, right, right. Uh, you know, and it's like, all right, you know, well, it's kind of changing out there. There's this thing called Pitchfork, and uh, <laughs> it seems to be breaking you know, music it's, a lot it's, faster it's, than we used to. But, you know, there's there's a thing where... I'm trying to think if I can tell this story. Nobody wants to say no to the next... Mad Men or Walking Dead or Sopranos. Yes. But all the usual suspects say no to Mad Men, Walking Dead, and Sopranos. I hear you. I hear, you know, the Orville. I, I got to tell you, I, I watched the second episode, uh, the the Seth MacFarlane parody, and uh, I like it. I like it enough, and I think it's going in the right direction. And also with the usual shaving off the sharp edges of, of anything interesting. Um you know, and it and it I, as I understand it, he did kind of pitch it to the Star Trek people, and they're like, "No, of course not." And it's like, all right, <laughs> you might you might want to reconsider. There was that thing called Galaxy yeah, Quest I, that was cute I, enough, you know. I heard it was pitched as half an hour, and they were like, "We're not going to build you a ship for a half hour," so we had to turn it into an hour. That's even more interesting. Wow, okay. I don't know if that's true, but it's that kind of a uh, cart before horse kind of. Yeah. Wait a second, this guy that's made us literally billions of dollars for the last 20 years <laughs> wants us to spend $800,000 on a set? Yeah, easy there, pal. God, uh, Matt Groening, 
I mean, I'm sure has the war stories even worse. I mean, and then, you know, add another 20 years or whatever, another 10 years, I guess. But well, look, it's telling that Matt Groening's next show isn't on fucking Fox. Amen. There you go. I know it's fascinating, man. I'm telling you, it's it's really honestly. I, as a spectator, I find this this media age amazing. And I guess I'm not a spectator because I'm not, I'm on the broadcast end of radio still. You know, <laughs> hanging onto the meteor as as we orbit. And it's uh, yeah, it's it's interesting. But again, that's why podcasting, man. You know, podcasting. What the fuck? We don't care. It's uh, we're that's our creator own world. Yeah, exactly. And we love exactly. it. And, and that's great. We, you know, and don't have and are not serving a client and everything. So, no, I I get it. And, um, no, I hope that, uh, you know, the right uh, lords of, of Universal are listening. Universal's fascinating. And that's a hell of a history. Oh, my God. Did you, I'm sure you saw it. The Last Mogul. Uh, I saw the first. I saw most of the pilot. Oh, it's not. Oh, no, no. That's <laughs> Last Tycoon, I believe, is what you're referring to on Amazon. Yeah, okay, what's The Last okay, Mogul? Last Mogul is, and by the way, I also saw the first episode of Last Tycoon. It looks really great, and I do intend to get back to the rest of it. I think it's an excellent series. But Last Mogul was a documentary about, uh, oh, God, now I'm blanking it, Lou Wasserman. Oh, shit, yeah, okay. Yeah. No, I, 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 I know my Lou Wasserman, but I, I haven't seen that. I'll, I'll check it it's out. It's fantastic, and it really does, like, from him being – an office oh, boy yeah. at MCA yeah, yeah. in the in the music yeah. world to becoming the head of Universal and Universal for the audience because you already know the story and I'm sure I'm I'm always fascinated if they you know acknowledge their history and I'm sure there is a Lou I know there's a Lou Wasserman building on the Universal yeah. lot and everything but yeah I mean really like Universal created the TV movie they got so big in developing early television because they would package shows with you know established stars and Lou was an agent that became a producer that became a studio mogul and it got so bad that uh the FCC kind of made them uh like separate and be like no you either produce TV shows or you represent stars as agents you can't do both right. and, and right. there there are TV shows from the 50s and 60s that they were just shitting out that it were a varying quality and stuff, but I mean, God, no, like so much product on all three networks. Yeah. It was insane. So yeah, yeah, Universal is really interesting. And then of course, you know, my sweet spot and you're a little younger, but I know you appreciate like, you know, all the, all the bad fashions of the polyester detectives of the seventies from mm -hmm. Canon to Mannix to Columbo. I love Columbo. Columbo's the exception, obviously. Yeah. It's amazing to watch that stuff now. <laughs> Just the pacing yes. is so <laughs> slow. Like, <laughs> like, like Columbo makes Twin Peaks: The Return look brisk. <laughs> Mich it literally. Now this shot is going to be three and a half minutes long, and it's Peter Falk looking at a dead body on a beach, mumbling to himself. And he's going to ask a question, a guy's going to say a thing, and then he's going to repeat the thing, and the guy's going to confirm that that's what he said. And it's going to go on for three minutes. Yep. We going to move the camera? Fuck, no, we are not. <laughs> you put those sticks in the fucking sand, and you just roll it. <laughs> and now, now let me, let me, the body, the high tide was, you said high tide was 7.30? Yes, Detective Columbo, high tide was 7.30. High tide was 7.30, 7 7.30. It's three fucking minutes. It's amazing. <laughs> See, my example is um, Greg Morris um, cracking his safe on Mission Impossible, which on Alias with you know Jennifer Garner, Sidney Bristow, it's like five seconds of click, click, open the door. And Barney yeah. is crouched over that safe with the Lalo Schifrin drums in the background for like they just keep cutting back to him. Okay, Barney's still cut, yeah. you know. Peter yep. Lupus is yep. uh, making some uh, phony move right now. Barney's still cracking the safe. Ten minutes later, yeah, he's still cracking the safe. I would murder to have a thumb drive as fast as any thumb drive on any television show at any time. <laughs> I, I, I will always think that, like, all right, and now the, the now uh, the breathtaking copying the files montage. <laughs> Just cut to like Ethan Hunt, like his feet up on a desk, like wow, you know, it was a uh, Honor Majesty Secret Service, uh, Lazenby reading a Playboy while the safe cracking machine is working. That's how long it takes the, the machine to work. 
Ah, uh, there you go. Exactly. That's the. But isn't it interesting? The different techniques of surveillance or inf- information gathering or whatever. The challenges now to the modern writer. Uh, and, and you know, you try and look at that stuff to kind of maybe get ideas for moving the moving the story along with a you know an information drop or an exchange of information or you know and now in the world of you know surveillance cameras and google maps and everything it's and and thumb drives you know uh hacking and stuff like that it's a it's a different world i i think the problem is more in a world of yeah google maps and thumb drives and cameras everywhere being used by lazy writers on television as like enhance look we've picked up this this fucking this the 72 dpi webcam has zoomed in perfectly to a license plate 40 <laughs> yards away at night can you enhance that yes i can <laughs> yeah the sharpening the image is resolving now like it, that's the problem it, you know like uh, have you done jury duty uh, in the last uh, 10 years <laughs> I literally I did jury duty on a murder on a on a on a on a it was it was it was either murder one or man one wow. and I did a fucking week and literally the first day was them just telling us again and again CSI is bullshit. <laughs> what do the boys in the lab have, Jimmy? Yeah, well, let's see. The knife went through. No, it's all bullshit. Really. No. Police work is hard and it's boring and there's a lot of paperwork and a lot of rules. And there's no magic enhanced zigzag bullshit we can do to get to the bottom of this. Like, it, now, let me explain it to you different. Shut up. Like, it was just like, it just kept going on and on. And like, oh, my God. One week of jury duty. Yeah, that was, a, that was the first day, anyway. I understand, but no, that's interesting that you were on a jury and everything. Because, and it's a thing. It's like the CSI effect. Like People believe, like, well, why don't they just enhance the audio and sharpen that doesn't exist? <laughs> well, he had a cell phone with him. Surely we can hack the memory of the cell phone to see what was recorded. And the la- no, that doesn't actually work, except on shows where people have no other ideas. That's fantastic. Oh, my God. Terrible. But true. That's very good, man. Jesus. So I, know, I actually find myself drawn to writing, period, uh, uh, precisely because there's no you, – you, there's, you, there's, there's not a cell phone. Like, look, watch all the President's Men. They could have had that shit wrapped up in 40 minutes. <laughs> I, have been watching, I have been watching all the President's Men lately. Literally a scene. There's a shot where Dustin Hoffman exits a building, runs across the street, and dashes about half a block – to get to a payphone to make a call to tell Woodward he's found it and he's coming home. Yep. I, yeah, it's amazing. I love I love period stuff, but and I agree that uh, certainly Universal Television in particular. Yeah, there are a lot of scenes of nothing. I, Stephen Cannell, you know, and I know I'm sure we've talked about this before, but it's been a while since I've said it on the podcast. The Academy of Television, uh, under if you look up TV Legends, you'll see snippets on YouTube. But they have these great oh, yeah, long yeah. oral history interviews. And Stephen yeah. Cannell, the A Team, wise guy. Uh, what am I? I'm sure I'm missing like huge. Oh, Twenty One Jump Street. That creator, that you know everyone knows. He talked about how he learned at the feet of Roy Huggins, who produced The Fugitive and the Rock and the Rockford Files with Rockford Cannell Files. and everything. Um, they co-produced that. And would talk about, like, oh, we needed to, oh, we're, like, you know, 45 seconds short. Oh, no problem. We'll just extend the credits at the beginning. And you get those episodes of Rockford Files where, really, he's just literally driving around the street. And it's like, you know, guest star, John Hargrave. And, you know, special guest star, Myrna Loy. You know, know, know the the lost art of um, the pre-show minute and a half long trailer for what you're about to watch. Yes. Like that's you know, there's a, a Rockford uh, came out on Blu-ray not long ago, and of course I indulged and sort of as a chance to revisit. It was all like, oh right, it's tonight on Rockford Files, and then here's eight minutes of what you're about to see. <laughs> Usually ending with either a car crash or an explosion. Yeah, yeah, and like then like a freeze frame of a of a fucking seventy four 
charger uh, uh, plummeting into um, 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 fucking Topanga Canyon. <laughs> Don't give me that, Dennis. I need to get to the bottom of this. You're wrong, Rockford. You've always been wrong. Good stuff, man. Oh, see, that's TV. <laughs> yeah. That, by the way, the monolith that, that won't change. Well, I guess it has changed now because, fuck, they don't even have time for a theme song anymore. No. <laughs> well, let's move back to comics. And I appreciate that, man, because as always, um, you guys have a great perspective. And, and being in the thick of it, I, I am curious, like I said, as a spectator of what's going on on the TV side. And I think it's an incredible time. It's a great opportunity. And, yeah, no, I think, I think, I think. TV right now is what movies were in the 70s. Yep. I think it's where the real writing is getting done and the real directing is happening. And that's and uh, that's the problem with the films now. I mean, it's it's. I mean, there's still good little movies made. Yeah, but but movies the movies are either two hundred thousand dollars or two hundred million dollars. Yes. Well, all the President's Men couldn't be made today. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Although I, I now that I will slightly disagree with when you think of uh, Spotlight, obviously. Uh, you know the budget on Spotlight, though. I can now gotta see. Bendis would know this. Off of course, the top he of his would. Head. <laughs> <laughs> and, but it, I, but I, to I break, but, but to break still, through but, and find an audience is hard. And thankfully, it did. I bet it was eighty. I bet it was eighty at least. Uh, with Let's all the see. stars, I, I bet you're right. Yeah, uh, but a oh, budget two hundred estimated bullshit. They say it was a two hundred million. Or no, a budget, a budget twenty twenty. There's no way it was twenty million. Yeah, that seems cheap too. Fucking, fucking even yeah. Well, still twenty million dollars or two hundred oh, million dollars. Totally. Oh no, I completely agree with you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Big Sick was a lot of fun this summer. Yeah, you yeah. know. And again, I think it's again it's really interesting because there is that alt comedy, which I obviously does dovetail into the nerd realm. Um, there, the, the you know we're willing to go out. And see those movies, but right. you know, but you're right. And in terms of uh, television being what it was, what films were in the '70s, oh, obviously, yeah, the much more complicated character arc and the the canvas to tell a complicated story, and have your little you know interludes of all right, this this week it's just going to be about character X, and we're really going to get right. into their backstory and stuff. No, it's 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 amazing, and that's why it is interesting for the challenge of you know. When it isn't a tentpole blockbuster, what what manages to break through? Because there's there right. are there's I mean the, you know there's shitty red box movies that you know unfortunately it just didn't work or whatever. But yeah, there's good ones too that just they don't make it. I, my great example was Two Guns, if you, you know years ago, and talking about oh, right, Richie right. from Boom and saying shit, man, twenty years ago this would have been Lethal Weapon and been the hit the hit of the summer. Right. And it wasn't. Well, and look, it, this, this summer, uh, Hollywood ate itself. You know? Um, this summer, uh, 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 look at the, bo- yes. the, the box office, terrible. And there was, like, look at the schedule going into the summer. It was insane. Every, there, was, there, was a, there was a quarter million or quarter billion dollar movie opening every eight days. Yeah. Uh, uh, and nothing is going to stick nothing's gonna that's just an impossible environment to everyone you get more and more like pre-awareness pre-awareness oh people love baywatch let's make a baywatch movie like well it's not quite how it works (laughs) hey people you you remember night court people like night court night court the movie it's not gonna work yeah i'm with you man well and also uh some you know franchises failed too which by the way, I don't need the seventeenth Pirates of the Caribbean. I wasn't crazy about the first one, but that's just me, you know. And uh, and Transformers bombed, you know. Uh, and the other one that I'm just like, really, didn't we just have King Arthur within the last ten years a couple times, and we're back again? And I actually hear that one, unfortunately, kind of like uh, uh, John Carter, where it's like, well, you know, it's actually better than people, you know, the the buzz, and it still didn't find its audience. And I don't know. I I have to confess, I haven't seen it yet or frankly all of john carter and you know, so maybe i'm wrong uh, uh, john, john carter is a real shame john okay. carter was perfect. okay um um i i saw some of king arthur over somebody's shoulder on an airplane and it looked kind of exactly like what you would think it would look like which i think is maybe the problem well and i guess it sounded like that they were trying to make it more franchisable yeah, yeah, totally. So, yeah. Totally. Any, any, anytime a movie has a colon in the title, they're trying to make it a franchise. 
We're back to fecal. There's never We're been a movie political. with a quote with a naturally occurring colon in a title is, does not exist. It's always <laughs> you gotta you have to uh, coin that as fractions law. There you go. <laughs> That's great, man. No, and also also uh, uh, the uh, the the number of sequels is directly proportionate to the number of colons in the title. Are we good for time? Because I'm enjoying this, and I don't want to. But also, I know you've got family stuff because we haven't gotten to your your coming uh, project with uh, with Terry Dodson. Um. Yeah. I'm. I'm just. I'm old. I go to bed early now. So. I understand that too. Um, my uh, my energy is flagging, but no, I can I can pull it together. I can make ah, this God work. God bless you. All right. So, uh, every man. Uh, Adventure man. Adventure man. Pardon me. So tell me about Adventure man with an exclamation point. Yeah, and it's um um. Uh, uh, Terry sort of found this, this sort of the beautiful way to describe it. We've been sort of struggling. It's like um, um, if uh, Love and Rockets had, had stayed with the Rockets instead of the Love. Um, it's a it's a big rollicking adventure comic. Um, it's it's me and Terry trying to do you know uh, Indiana Jones and Hellboy and 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 kind of big grand old fun inclusive adventure stories uh uh kind of in this crazy world where you know anything happens and anything can anything goes um that's the story of an old pulp hero kind of in the uh doc savage mold um who, who it turns out was not a fictional character and and that the books were actually records of things that had happened uh, and uh, uh, perhaps the only remaining fan, uh, an ex-policewoman uh, uh, named Claire, realizes that these were instructions and not fanciful acts of whimsy. And and as she begins to put together kind of the mystery of who Adventure Man really was, she kind of becomes Adventure Man. Interesting. And then she and her family of, of uh, 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 six sisters uh, all kind of adopt the different roles of you know, the kind of the classic docs team. Yeah. The sort of the, you know, there's the, the, the magician, the aviatrix, the mechanic, you know, every, you know, the sort of classical classic role of, 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 of adventures. So it's, it's sort of what pulp adventure looks like today. So it's modern looking back at this hero of of the pulp era of the thirties. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Kind of realizing Oh wait, this wasn't a and in, in sort of the entirety of history has been occluded and rewritten um, in the wake of of some of the events and and as she starts to investigate who Adventure Man was for real, Adventure Man sort of uh, the 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 his foes kind of also begin to rise again. Interesting, uh, and it becomes a. Um, like a big family adventure story, you know, and it's it's like that's it's 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 what it is. It's Tintin by way of Love and Rockets. Cool, that's great. Well, and you know, Terry obviously draws, you know, amazing women. Oh yeah, and it's 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 um, incredibly diverse and uh, uh, globe spanning, and um, I think our first issue is going to be like sixty some pages. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, it's going to be a giant first issue. That's really cool. I loved. Was it Red One? Uh, his yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I, I loved that. That was fantastic. And you know, Terry and I have been like dancing around the idea of obviously him coming on for years. And I saw him. Oh. I saw him a couple times at cons last year and stuff. So it'll definitely happen. But uh, we're, we're looking looking forward to that. And glad you guys are back together again, Defenders. Right? Yeah, 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 and it was it was very much born of that experience and sort of like you know what we should do. Very cool. So. Yeah, man. No, and I, and he's obviously like I said with uh, with uh, uh, big red one. Uh, he's been leaning in that uh, that area and stuff because that that to me really felt like uh, that great Raquel Welch movie, and that's a rare statement to make. But fathom, of course, and I'm guessing. Oh sure, I can say, I'm sure, sure. That's a that's a favorite in the uh, Fraction House. Um. You know, it has, it has, it has its perks. <laughs> it's no Kansas City bomber, I grant you. Yeah, right. Come on now. It's not a... It's, how dare you? <laughs> Anything... Do you even have time? Anything fun 
that uh, you've been reading or watching? I, I, you know, I do this with you, Ed and uh, Greg and Bendis. Yeah. Um, I just haven't. I loved uh, Twin Peaks: The Return. Um, um, I absolutely loved it. I, I, I tolerated uh, Game of Thrones and, and feigned interest, and was happy to see my friends. But really, I just kept thinking. Oh, two more hours until Twin Peaks. <laughs> uh, all summer long. Um, I've enjoyed the first couple episodes of The Deuce. Uh, I watched the pilot and thought it was really strong. Um, and th- that's kind of it. Like, I didn't see anything this summer, really. I didn't. Okay. Yeah. No, man. It's, uh, uh, I got, I got. Sure. Two- yeah, I got two kids. Yeah, and, and when I do read, it, it, it always tends to be, um, I, I very rarely read fiction. Uh, uh, I, I read a lot of nonfiction. There's a lot of research for projects. Sure, sure. When and we didn't say this. When is Adventure Man potentially coming out? Uh, maybe spring. Okay. I don't know. We're we're we have kind of an ambitious plan for how we want to launch it. Um, and it's going to take some some arranging and some doing, but. It's sooner rather than later. Okay. Image, obviously. Yeah. Uh, dude, awesome. Well done. And uh, as always, and and truly, it's. It, I'm sorry it's been so long. It was so cute last year. We literally saw each other for like ten seconds. I hugged you both as we were at uh, San Diego and passing each other. And mm-hmm. that was it. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> but it was great. And I know I, I felt the good vibes, and I felt the same way. So no, and uh, I'm I'm really glad, and and truly. Keep up all the great work, and uh, and very excited about what is on the horizon, both in comics and television, and that you're willing to share it as always, too, man. So, uh, you're a prince. Thank you, John. That's Matt Fraction. I hope you enjoyed today's conversation, and as I said, I hope to uh, shorten the time between our next conversation. But always glad to pick Matt's brain, and I really always appreciate him speaking his mind and being very comfortable to do that here on Word Balloon. Hope you liked uh, today's show. It was brought to you by the League of Word Balloon listeners. Again, if you'd like to help Word Balloon out through a a subscription, a monthly subscription, it's not necessary, but if you think uh, what I do is worth your time and um, a little bit of your money, I would appreciate it. Go to wordballoon.com, click on the Patreon ad, or go to patreon.com slash wordballoon. Thank you, League of Word Balloon listeners. Word Balloon is also brought to you by InStock Trades at instocktrades.com. And uh, among the books that you can get... How about uh, Spider-Man 2099 from Peter David and Will Sliney? It's uh, it's pretty cool. This is uh, Volume 7, Back to Future Shock is what it's called. And it's 112 pages, 42% off, $10.43. You can get The End League, the library edition hardcover from Rick Remender and Eric Canetti. This is a wonderful dystopian, uh, oh, excuse me, Matt Broom is your interior artist. Eric Kennedy is your cover artist. Shame on me, and I apologize, Matt. But uh, this is a wonderful book, a great superhero apocalyptic story from uh, Broom and Remender. It's 42% off, $23.19 from In Stock Trades. You can also get uh, Batman meets Wonder Woman 77. Batman 66 meets Wonder Woman 77. This is a tremendous story from uh, David Hahn as the artist and, of course, my buddy Jeff Parker, Really fun, man, and also Mark Andreco uh, co-writing this book as well. Uh, this is really an excellent story that takes place in several decades uh, to make sense, and uh, it, it really is a great crossover. And you really do feel like you're reading a Linda Carter Adam West collaboration with them at their best as their characters. Uh, this is um, how many pages? 144 pages, 42 percent off, fourteen dollars and forty nine cents. From InStockTrades.com. You can also get Injustice Ground Zero Volume 2, and that is the wonderful work of Chris Sabella, Tom Derenick, David Sampry, and Pop Han. And uh, it is uh, really amazing, and I suggest it because uh, Injustice is really kind of a fun, dark version of Justice League, and it, it gives us some really exciting moves uh, by the creators that I absolutely adore. Uh, it is uh, 42% off, 136 pages, just $14.49 from InStockTrades.com. Check out all the great deals at great prices, InStockTrades.com. Thanks again for listening to today's Word Balloon. If you didn't notice in the feed, I've got a great conversation as well with the great Mike Zek, 
and uh, John Beatty. It was a panel that we did at Salt Lake City Comic Con, which was a huge success. And I thank the organizers for inviting me and giving me the opportunity to do several panels. And I'm bringing a couple of them to you here on Word Balloon. And I hope uh, you'll enjoy them. But that is the other episode that I've released today. Uh, Mike Zek, John Beatty, talking about their wonderful period at Marvel. Shang-Chi, Captain America, Marvel's Secret War, or Wars, excuse me, the very original uh, Secret Wars uh, run that Mike was the artist on. Circle of Blood and their work on The Punisher. Really interesting, fun stories about their beginnings, getting together, and some of the wonderful events that they were part of at Marvel Comics. Mike Zek and Sean Beatty on Word Balloon. It's out today alongside this Mad Fraction episode. Give it a listen. Until next time, Word Balloon is a copyright feature of Shaky Productions, copyright 2017.